Did you watch my fastest car easy build guide and think, oh that's too easy? Or more likely, you got sick of rolling back down hills and crashing into stuff and it falling to bits. Well, I think I've got a solution for you. This is the Marauder. It's a similar design to the Easy Build Guide in which we use small wheels to rotate a flux core, which in turn rotates the big wheels, making the vehicle move really quickly. Once again, we're restricting ourselves to not using any glitches, no stake nudging or advanced techniques, just a straight up build. So let's get started. We're going to need some materials as this build uses a maximum of 21 parts and that includes 10 small wheels, 4 big wheels, 4 flux core ones, 2 wagon wheels and finally a steering wheel. Now I'm going to be honest with you, this is the auto build version that I had saved and we're not going to build exactly the same as this for two reasons. Number one being, I tried and completely failed to make the same thing. And the second reason is that another method I've got is actually slightly easier to put together. We're going to start by building the axles. So begin with a flux core placed vertically on the ground and then lower a big wheel on top and try and get it perfectly centered. Pick the axle up by the flux core and rotate it around in order to ensure that it's perfectly aligned. Once you have that, you're going to flip it over and then you're going to lower down a wagon wheel on top and again, try and make sure that it's perfectly centered. Unfortunately, there aren't any snap points on the flux core that's going to help you get it centered, so you're just going to have to detach and then reattach if you don't get it quite right. Look at the wagon wheel and you can see it's really wobbly here, so I'll have to redo it. When you've managed to get the wagon wheel on, it's time to attach another flux core onto the opposite side of the wagon wheel. With the flux core placed vertically, we're going to lower the axle down and attach the wagon wheel to it. The reason we're lowering things down onto the flux core is it's easier to see where it's going to join and it's a bit easier to judge. Flip the whole axle around and then we're going to lower the second big wheel on top. This part can be tricky because the camera angle really doesn't help you. The switch Joy-Cons really don't help either because the analog sticks are super sensitive and even the tiniest movement can throw things off. All I can suggest here is be very delicate and patient. This is a good example of a big wheel that hasn't been centered very well. Here's a much better version. Now the eagle-eyed among you might see that there is slight wobble there, but honestly I'm not too worried about that because by the time we're finished building, there's a good chance it won't have much of an effect. The next stage is to start building the chassis around this axle. What we want is a small wheel independently attached to the wagon wheel on both sides. Placement is absolutely critical here in order to ensure a good build and it's important that you get both small wheels symmetrically placed. You'll be able to see from this attempt that although they're kind of aligned on one axis, on the other they're completely off, so we have to do that again. To help with this I used a stake and then found a concrete slab and piece of wood from the Tarrytown construction site. Used this to build a rig in order to support things so the second small wheel can be placed and aligned perfectly next to the first. Remember, with this type of design, the only join between the chassis and the axles comes through the wagon wheel, which makes that the weakest point. Having two small wheels either side of the wagon wheel should help support it a little bit and also evenly distribute stresses and forces. Placement of these small wheels can be quite fiddly and difficult to get right. Pay close attention to the video and look closely to see where the join is between the wagon wheel and the small wheel. You want to attach the wagon wheel to the upper rim of the small wheel as indicated here. We're then going to add two small wheels to the outside of the original two at 90 degree angles. A neat little trick you can use here is standing on the big wheels in order to place the small wheels. This will stop things from moving around because there's a mechanic where if you ultra hand something that you are stood upon, whatever you're stood on just simply will not move. Remember you do want some compression on the small wheel so it's pressing down onto the flux core. This can make placement difficult as the small wheel can be quite slippery. You might want to use a small wheel attached to a stake in order to place it as this should stop the small wheel from slipping around. However, as you can see, it's not necessary as I managed to get it here without a stake. 
the next step is to use auto build in order to replicate that entire structure so that you've got two axles with part of the chassis already around it. We're going to place these structures vertically next to each other and we're going to try and attach them together. This is where you might notice that things are a little bit different to the original Marauder you saw at the beginning. We're going to make sure all of the small wheels are orientated at a 45 degree angle and that's to make sure that we've got ground clearance when we actually put it flat. Honestly, the way these joined together was a little bit surprising. The angles are not 45 degrees, it's very weird, but it's actually quite effective. The last two small wheels get placed at the rear in between the two outer small wheels. This, as all of the other small wheels, are placed in order to try and keep the axle in position and not wobbling around and liable to break. You don't actually need this many small wheels in order to drive the flux cores, but they do serve the additional purpose of ensuring that the axle stays in position and they don't end up flopping around or breaking off. Once you're happy with your placement, the only thing left to do is add the final part, which is the steering wheel, which you can place anywhere you like, really. I've just put mine in the centre somewhere. And there we have it. A much more robust and stronger version of the easy build guide that hopefully rectifies some of the issues that people saw. The only real issues are the build process is more complicated and probably will take a little bit more time. But it's probably easier to drive and steer and it's still fast, especially downhill. It will still struggle on inclines. However, with the dual axle, you can now zigzag left and right in order to overcome stuff. And you won't need to worry so much about things snapping off, because the stresses and strains are evenly distributed from left to right. Just listen out for the glue and make sure it's not stretching too far. So that's it. Why don't you give it a go and uh, let me know what you think. Cheers, bye.